What is up, down, and sideways, you beautiful people of this beautiful planet. We're back. It's League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. And listen, usually post-MSI, we're ready to have weeks plus of off-season content, fill in the void before we get back into games. But a lot of people, myself included, kind of forgot that the LPL is going to a brand new format for the summer split. And that means they're getting started this weekend. Not even two full weeks after MSI and the LPL's back on the rift. I mean, uh, we went long distance with the spring split for the LPL, and we're getting an early head start on everybody for the summer split. Just the way it goes when you host MSI. So not a lot of distance to go and stuff like that. And as you laid out, more importantly, it is the changes that are happening for the LPL, which are significant ones to go through, not as significant I think as some people might have hoped or initially thought was going to go through with these changes, but absolutely impactful ones nonetheless and ones you got to be prepped on before we dive into the LPL this weekend. Obviously, the biggest change, probably the one people are most excited about, is Fearless Draft coming in. And now this new format is kind of broken into three different uh, sections or rounds of action only this first round is actually going to have fearless draft and i believe they're doing kind of a soft fearless draft where if team a picks lucian nami they can't pick lucian nami for game two but team b can pick lucian nami some of the i think the ldl even was doing it where once lucian nami is picked both teams cannot play it for the rest of the series Yes, and I think that's what a lot of people were, you know, and people that do believe in Fearless Draft as an idea and something that can shake the tree and cause you to have more interesting games and more appearances of, of random random champions uh, type of thing coming through that you do get in that full-on, full-force uh, Fearless Draft. But what we get here in this type of one, uh, I have equated to kind of you're dipping your both of your big toes into the pool. You're testing that water. Just, oh, you know, maybe it's a little chilly. You're just checking it out type of situation. That's how it feels for the LPL with this fearless draft. They don't want to go all in, all the chips to the table, but they are making this change. And this is one that I think for a lot of people, it's going to go one or both ways. You're going to have teams either turtling the draft a little bit, kind of being protective of these, you know, big picks duo picks these type of things the meta uh, of what you're gonna see or it is just gonna be this full force craziness that we are expecting and hoping for with the with the fearless draft that will cause the chaos for the opia and i get them maybe not committing to it for the entire split because you're going to have the LPL teams all training and fearless maybe having some crazy picks that are off meta because they have to and then at Worlds, no other region has been practicing like that. So it's a bit of a disconnect when an international event rolls around. So I get them easing into it. But this first round that will have Fearless, we've got the teams broken up into four different groups. One of the team or one of the groups has five teams because there's 17 LPL squads. The seeding is based on the spring split. So, you know, you have Top Esports, BLG, and um JDG all in different groups and it's a best of three round robin once around you play all the teams in your group the top two teams from each group are advancing to the winners bracket side of things into round two where the winners teams will all play against each other the losers teams will all play against each other and I think first and foremost this new format the idea is to avoid these blowout best of threes where you have BLG going up against Thunder Talk and annihilating them. It's going to be more the bottom teams fighting for that right to get to playoffs. Well, number one, they, they nailed it in avoiding having an absolute cluster of some of these top elite level squads of the LPL stuck in the same group, which might sound like an interesting option. But in reality, having them spread out like this and given the nature of the LPL and especially how this last spring split went out and where teams are going to fall out and into, you're going to have squads that are better than they are than they their results were in spring and are going to be more of a challenge during this summer split. And you've absolutely got teams that were the frauds, that were the people that fooled everybody, fooled their opponents into letting them take their nexus. And not going to be able to pull those tricks off in summer is the feeling for some of them. So you better believe we are going to get interesting action and combos coming out of these groups for the LPL. 
Yeah, and there's still the potential for, you know, a Dark Horse surprise run because in this second round of action where Fearless Draft no longer exists, the top seven teams from the winner's bracket are automatically going to round three or the actual summer playoffs, which is the exact same format as spring, double elim, best of fives. And then the bottom two winner teams, I believe, are going to be playing against the top four teams from this loser's bracket in the second round. So it's a little convoluted on paper. We need to see this actually play out, I think, for people to fully comprehend what's going on with this format. Because there's, there's just so much happening, yeah. right? And there's so many It levels. seems like there's so going to be even more games than the previous format. That's my understanding from this type of one. But really, I don't have the confidence to say anything like that until we see these games start to pile up. Until we see this transition from obviously the first half where we are having this fearless draft into this second half where it starts to split out. As you mentioned, you're going to have these teams going straight through to that starting of the summer playoffs. And then you're taking that bottom of the top and you're taking that top of the bottom and you're throwing them together to duke it out for that final playoff spot. I think the drama, the tension, the excitement that is possible for that type of format is something we haven't seen in any other region before. And let's be honest, in spring, it felt like the 10 playoff teams were kind of set in the LPL with like three weeks to go in the regular season with only seeding up for grabs. So I think you're going to have a lot less meaningless games. There, there should actually be less games overall, or at least the same amount of games, but they have a higher impact. So it, it feels like a similar effect to the sweeping changes that we got at the World Championship going to that Swiss format. My expectation with this this thing where you're taking down the bottom of the top and the top of the bottom and throwing them together to battle it out for that those last playoff spots and you're not you're avoiding this situation where you're going to have all of these you know the foldy sheet spreadsheets that we got for the lec and the lcs because throwing that group together it's going to be a lot of this team beats you you don't got a shot anymore type of situation you're going to have these knockout matches head to heads the drama is going to be intense for these spots in the LPL. And, you know, looking at the first round matchups, these are going to be probably the least interesting ones because you have all the good teams kind of spread out and there's some weaker teams amongst them. But looking at day one action, immediately you're looking at Weibo versus NIP Ninjas in pajamas, who obviously both of these were fraudulent teams at times in spring. But now we're getting this new look Weibo with both Breathe and Tarzan coming over. That is a big time change for Weibo Gaming and certainly one that a lot of people are going to say is going to put them back in that conversation with the top level teams of the LPL. Still want to see that tested out this weekend is your chance to get your very first taste of it through that one. And as you mentioned, on the other side, you're rolling through with ninjas in pajamas, the other squad that did get labeled the frauds at times. And I think a, a squad that also dispelled that label of frauds at certain points throughout the ending of that LPL spring split. Now they got to prove that was real. That was the ninjas in pajamas, the one that says we are not frauds, not the ones contributing to that early in the spring split. That is your look at it early in the summer. Get in. This matchup, I'm telling you, this is the one that you got to start with this weekend. Yeah, and listen, NIP had a top four finish, took JDG to five games to close out spring. So yeah, they definitely defied those uh, fraud allegations in the playoff push, whereas Weibo did not. We'll see if uh, Tarzan can take them to the next level, but uh, very excited, especially still, to see the impact Fearless has. It feels like this is the first domino before maybe next year 2025 other regions start taking this in because we got it in the challenger scene in the lcs already as well so it feels like it's only a matter of time before you're seeing it in major regions and potentially international events there's going to be a lot of eyeballs a lot of attention on how this plays out for the lpl and especially what, what is the follow-up what is the pathways that teams take strategies and stuff like this because this will be that indication of again talking about whether this creates an environment where teams want to turtle in on certain picks and what you do get in these compositions or if it is that thing that thrusts all these new picks all these new ideas strategies and challenges through into that forefront of the meta of what we see week to week that is the hope from it and then the other question still that does remain 
but yes, it is that dipping your toes in the water. How does this lead to your performance, your preparation towards Worlds, towards this final event where you are the only region doing this type of form at Major Region? Are you going to be at a disadvantage? Are we going to see all of a sudden the LPL play so freely and confident with their meta choices and off meta choices type of thing? That is going to be, I think, really the, the uh, kind of short to medium term fallout I want to see from this changes in the LPL. Yeah, I mean, I think you could argue either way it being a disadvantage or advantage if you're the only one doing fearless because you'll be more comfortable on the not meta stuff but maybe less comfortable on the meta stuff when international uh, events roll around. So very curious to see how this plays out. But either way, we already got games back, big time games with Major Region LPL getting going this weekend. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you lovely individuals. Thank you for hanging out as always, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.